is that um, what kind of projects does this lead to? Um, like uh, when we're talking about software development, uh, uh, is that in Western style projects, uh, very often um, project managers will try to uh, run their projects, uh, trying to keep the, min the customizations of software to a minimum. And when we're talking about CRM, when we're talking about ERP, I'm talking about these software packages that, that are being used in business. Uh, usually what we do, with, especially if we are, to, we are uh, implementing a software like SAP uh, or other big uh, enterprise packages, then we are trying to keep minimization, customization to a minimum. And um, so what, what, what we are doing is we are in, make inventory of the customer uh, processes and we say, okay, so uh, what you're doing is uh, you're doing ABC. Now the the the, the, the um, software uh, SAP software allows you to do ABD. Uh, so why don't we change the the process, the way that you work, instead of changing the software? Because if we uh, change the software, we need to spend more time. That costs more money, and in the future you will have to pay more for maintenance. Now this is best practice in the industry, so uh, let's change the processes. So basically what we're trying to do is we do that as much as possible, try to actually convince the customer that they change their processes a little bit. Now only when it comes to uh, very specific cases where the customer has a unique process that is critical to their added value in the industry, uh, we will build custom customizations. On the other hand, in Japan, even uh, I heard from uh, from people in the industry that they are even forced to copy exactly the same screen as they had in their previous software to avoid having to train their people that they need to put the same information at a different part of the screen, not in the top but in the bottom, for example, not in the left but on the right. So they customize basically everything because the customer asks for it and then um, we say yes, yes, because we want to keep the customer happy. But at the same time, we are running the costs very high and we are making uh, maintenance almost impossible. So clients, when they think we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this, they are giving exactly what they want, but they don't realize that what they think they want is not exactly what they want in the future. So these are a few considerations that when you're doing a project, when you're doing a software project in Japan. Well, I don't understand. You, you said uh, the, the copy, you said something copy. What, what, is it? What, what do you want to say? Copy? Yeah, you said something. The other example, just you said. I don't understand. What do you mean? Oh, um, about customization? Yeah, yeah. You said first is customization, right? So you need additional course must be careful about that. What is the current point, the second point? What is this? Well, the second point is basically that, that um, um, th there is a tendency in uh, for, for Japanese clients uh, to, uh, to be kind of uh, precise in what they want. So they want a lot of customizations uh, in, in, their, in their software projects. Uh, they want uh, every screen to be adjusted to exactly the way that they are. You that their current system is working. So oh, you mean the similar to the current system screen? Yes. So that if if their uh, accounting people are working with uh, software package ABC and they are they're migrating to SAP, the accounting the person responsible for uh, for accounting might insist on uh, having the screens look exactly like ABC because he doesn't have time to train the people. They are too busy, uh, they, they cannot be trained. Uh, so uh, instead of, uh, of training people, uh, he asked the software vendor to make the screens exactly the same as uh, ABC. Oh, okay, now, I understand. Of course, this is possible. But do you really want that? Do you really want to invest money and time in that? But if the, uh, if the uh, accountant is, is very powerful within the organization, uh, he might uh, be able to actually enforce it. 
Now, it's not only a, a measure of cost right now during the, the, the project and may, may lead to growth overruns. It's also going to uh, add to the cost in the future because with every upgrade of the system, you will need to actually make sure that all the customizations that you added in the past uh, will be able to survive in future releases. So that means to a uh, very high cost for every upgrade and every uh, software vendor, as you know, Amazon, they, every year they will add new features, new releases, because they want to make sure that people will renew their uh, subscription to the software and that's a big uh, stream of revenue. So um, changes will occur and customizations will be necessary and you will be paying a lot of people a lot of money to actually maintain all those stupid screens that need to be exactly the same, whereas you could have invested one or two days in training and achieved the same thing. Mm. So that is a that is a very ah Yuva yes. Uh, is that the trust is also involved in this risk management? Hmm. Uh, well, that's that's the, that's the, the the key point actually. I don't think it is. Um, trust is not really uh, identified in uh, risk management because basically trust is very difficult to measure. That's the, that's mm. the point. Mm. Um, in in, um, in in risk management, we very often look at quantifiable risks, um, and in order to mitigate those risks, you uh, uh, apply uh, mm. kind of industry standards like ISO mm. and other standards that you follow. For example, in in terms of bookkeeping, um, IFRS standards. Uh, or, or ISO standards or, or other standards like uh, uh, project management procedures that you follow like uh, I know that, uh, that you have been working on uh, on agile development and, and Kanban and, and these kind of principles basically the reason why you do that is you want to be predictable you want to be everybody on the same page because if you're not there is a risk that uh, there will be delays, there will be extra, uh, 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 there will be too many um, communication problems, and uh, that will lead to uh, cost overruns. So even a simple thing like a, a common project management methodology is in, in fact actually a risk reduction tool. Mm -hmm. um, and not only are you more productive, but also you are you're, you're mitigating your risks. Mm -hmm. Now. These things are measurable or quantifiable, there are in books, there are procedures for that. Mm -hmm. But how to manage trust? There is no book on that. Mm 